welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Out now on the Canon app is Lindsay Tollefson's Psalms for Trials. The Psalms are among the most beautiful poems ever written, but sometimes they feel very far from us and our daily struggles and goals. In Psalms for Trials, Lindsay shows us that the Psalms are not just pious words for the religious, but that they are meant to be our prayers for every trial we face, just as they have been a comfort for generations of Christians before us. Download the Canon app today and subscribe to listen to all of Lindsay Tollefson's Psalms for Trials. Welcome to the Feminine Podcast. This is Nancy Wilson, and thank you for joining me today. Today on the docket is a little encouragement. At least that's my plan, and that's my subject, and I think we could all use a little right now. When do we not need encouragement? (laughs) That's the question. So what is it to encourage someone in the first place? I suppose technically, if you look at the word itself, it's to fill them with courage. So It's to boost someone's faith, maybe, to reinforce them, to give them hope, to cheer them up. There are many forms that encouragement can take. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And I think this is similar. This is comfort yourselves together and build each other up, edify one another. And he says, as you've been doing, like, keep on doing this. Comfort yourselves together. As one of our Christian duties, I believe, really is to be encouragers and comforters. It's not that we have a person designated in the church to do that. It's like all of us who are in Christ should be, just by definition, sources of comfort and encouragement to others. And our duties for this particular aspect, I guess we could call it, our duties extend first to our families, of course. Like who, if you're, if you're still living at home, well then do your parents ever need encouragement? <laughs> do your siblings ever need encouragement? You know, what a, what a wonderful thing to meditate on. Say you're a high school student living at home and just give it a thought. Like how am I a source of comfort and encouragement to mom and dad and to my little sister and my big brother and so forth and so on? How can I encourage them? Well, it might be cheering them on, like, well done, thank you, gratitude, praying for you today, mom, helping, rolling your sleeves up, etc. And I think it's a fun thing to pray about. It's like, maybe fun is an odd word to use, (laughs) but pray about it. Say, Lord, how can I be an encouragement to mom today? What sort of thing could I do or say that would bless her and encourage her? And don't make it a once a year thing, like on Valentine's Day. Let's make it a regular feature of just being a little ray of sunshine, right? A blessing to be around and an encouragement. And of course, if you're married, then your husband should be the one that you focus on to encourage and to cheer on and to comfort. And then, of course, your children. So we all need this. And a wife and a mother is in a very unique position to offer comfort and encouragement to her kids and to her grandkids, and to her husband, obviously. But we want it to also extend beyond our families, just into the Christian community. Coworkers, visitors, roommates, the person in the pew behind you, is there someone there? Well, be an encouragement. Don't be a downer. (laughs) There are many ways to be a downer, and to be a burden, and to be, you know, like a sour face. So say, no, I am going to be an encourager. So this takes, I think it just takes a little bit of thought and focus. And that's why I'm bringing this to you today. Now, being a cheerleader, I think is something that a mom should be well-equipped to do. Well done, Susie. Way to go, Sam. (laughs) You know, where you're cheering them on. I'm so proud of you. You wrote your name. You know, when they're little and as they get bigger, of course, you're going to tailor make it for what they're doing and you'll treat them with respect and honor. But encouragement is something that all of us need. So just give it a little thought. And what are your potential people around you? Who are they that need your encouragement? Could be a classmate, 
roommate, etc. The scripture tells us that God charged Moses to encourage Joshua before he led the charge to inherit the land. Now, Joshua was a courageous warrior, a man of great faith. And even so, God tells Moses to encourage him and strengthen him. Here's the verse in Deuteronomy 138. But Joshua, this is God speaking to Moses. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. And then later in Deuteronomy 328, God speaking again to Moses, but charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. All right. So Moses is given this duty to encourage Joshua. And I think, well, we certainly wouldn't be out of line to imitate Moses here. It's a good word and a good example to us. Who are our leaders? Who are the ones leading the charge? Our ministers and our elders and other leaders in your community? Encourage them. Look for opportunities to strengthen them. And I think now in this political scene, sometimes it's letters of thanks and appreciation. I have a funny example of this. It wasn't one of our leaders in our community, but, oh, we were living on a little dirt road in the middle of town. And it didn't get plowed very often. It was a very hard winter. And the snow was, (laughs) it was epic. And our car, just digging our car out was quite a feat. But anyway, one morning the snowplow came by and it was so exciting because, you know, when we have a huge blizzard, they go for the most important roads first, which is only right. So I was so thankful that they had plowed our road. I can't even tell you. So I found their phone number. I called the city snowplow department (laughs) and got somebody on the line. I said, I just wanted to call and say thank you for plowing our street. It's a huge blessing, you know, blah, 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 whatever I said. The guy on the other end said, are you kidding me? You called us to thank us. (laughs) And I realized, yeah, who does that, right? Mostly we call to complain (laughs) you haven't plowed our road. But this must have been a great encouragement to him. He said, where do you live? And I gave him our address. And I tell you, that street got plowed (laughs) all winter. So anyway, I had the sense that I had been a, a big blessing and it was such a minor effort on my part. So I think that's encouragement right there. And look for ways. It wasn't uh, one of our leaders or it wasn't anybody I even knew. But there are things we can do that just encourage the people around us. When we are encouraging our leaders, like Moses encouraging Joshua, he's headed into a battle. So he needs to be strengthened and encouraged. So think of the people who are fighting for you right now on your behalf in many different ways. They are engaged in a battle. Encourage them. Strengthen them. God has ordained his own people to be the means of blessing and encouraging and strengthening one another. So it's our duty and our privilege, and he enables us to do this. But encouragement doesn't just end with encouraging others. We also, and I almost feel like this is where it all begins, is we have to learn to encourage ourselves, all right? Because if you are drooping, if you are discouraged, if you are disheartened, You're not in a real position of strength to encourage someone else. You can still do it, yes, by faith. But how much better if we are encouraged first ourselves? So in Judges 2022, Judges 2022, and the men of Israel encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day, right? So the men of Israel encouraged themselves And then they set their battle again in array. So they're getting all arranged for the next assault, the next big battle. They're getting in position and they encourage themselves, right? You see this maybe in a sporting event where there's, you know, the guys saying, we can do it. Come on, guys, or a race or something, encouraging themselves. And we encourage ourselves and one another in the Lord. We don't say, believe in yourself, you can do it. (laughs) No, we say, trust God, take heart. He is with you. 
He will bless you and strengthen you. So when we are encouraging ourselves, we're not telling ourselves a bunch of foolish lies. We are trusting God. And then in 1 Samuel 36, David himself encourages himself. He says, it says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. There you go. The people are all thinking about stoning David. All right. So the whole town is against you. And there's a lot of murmuring and grumbling going on. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. All right. The Lord, his God. So when you are up against it, all right, you encourage yourself in the Lord, your God. And if you know you are in the right place and you're doing the thing he's called you to do, well, then you should take heart and be encouraged. He's your God. He is your Lord. And he is going to encourage your heart. So the men going into battle encouraged themselves. They gave themselves a pep talk. They put themselves in readiness, in position for battle. They gave themselves a cheering up. And David was in a tight spot with the people. And he encouraged himself in the Lord as God. So that's the purpose and point of our encouragement. We encourage others and we encourage ourselves in the Lord, our God. He will never leave us or forsake us. So encouragement is not just vain hopes and futile promises of success. Those are just puffs of smoke. We have something solid. Our encouragement is to be Christ-centered, anchored in God's promises, It is to be urging ourselves and others on to more obedience, more faithfulness, more love to God. We should despise cowardice and we should despise compromise in ourselves and encourage ourselves to show more courage and more faith. And I think this is a really important part of the Christian life. If we are called to encourage others and they need us to encourage them, then we must first learn how to encourage ourselves because We can't become weak and dependent on everyone else. Like, I'm just discouraged today, so I'm just going to sit here and wait for someone to come encourage me. It's like, no, ladies, let's not do that. Let's not depend on the creature rather than the creator. At the same time, let's say you are a daughter, you're in high school, and you feel discouraged about something. Well, for sure, pray about it, but then go talk to mom about it. She's there. For that purpose. Say, Mom, I'm wanting to encourage myself and I'm just not sure I'm thinking in the right way. Can you give me some help here? You know, just there's nothing wrong with asking for encouragement and prayer, so forth. But at the same time, start practicing learning how to encourage yourself. And I've said this before don't listen to yourself, talk to yourself. Everybody, most everybody, anyway, wakes up some days discouraged. So pray for courage, right? Pray for courage. You're discouraged. Well, get some of his courage. Ask God to help you encourage yourself. Lord, please help me give myself a pep talk. Read the word. Believe it. And if you need to just grab yourself by the back of the neck, right? Drag yourself out of bed to do your duties. And you'll come under God's encouragement when you do that. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you're going to come under the power of discouragement. And sometimes we might actually like it in a perverse sort of way, like it's sort of appealing to just be sad and down in the dumps and mopey and so forth. And that's the worst. So it's imperative that you break loose of that power you've allowed discouragement to have over you. And I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Our flesh can trick us sometimes. And we think, I just want to sit here and feel kind of blue today and just have people wonder how I'm doing. And maybe somebody will come over and say, you look sort of down. What's the matter? Right. So first, ladies, let's take care of it ourselves first. Right. Let's not become dependent on the creatures, but on the creator, our creator. Don't cut yourself slack. Don't give yourself excuses. Do you pity yourself? And rather than encouraging yourself to better things, do you ever write a free pass for yourself? This is giving way to sin. And God expects better things of us. We're his children. So start by encouraging yourself. Say to yourself something like, it's time to get out of bed. Enough with the pampering. 
There's a boatload of things for me to get done today. So I'm going to get started. I mean, what a great idea. Instead of just saying, well, I do have a little headache. I think I'll just stay in bed. I think I won't get dressed. I think I'll just mope around. Nobody's coming over. I can get away with it. No, don't don't wait for someone else to come over and <laughs> encourage you. I've even tried it sometimes with people who don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. It's like they put their fingers in their ears. Don't want to hear it. Well, don't be that person. And remember, the men of Israel arrayed themselves for battle and encouraged themselves. So what's your battle plan today? What is your battle? Is it the laundry? Is it the dishes? Is it the grocery store? Is it, you know, just duties at the office or at school, that paper you have to write? Whatever it is, array yourself for battle and encourage yourself. So there you go. Blessings on your day. Thanks so much for joining me.